afternoon. Vish, can you see me? Yes. Good afternoon, Vish, everyone. I hope you all can see me. I hope you all are having fun. But I do mm -hmm. want to thank uh, some of our supporters who are sh have shown up today in mass and in force mm. because Black Health Matters. I must thank the Central Area Links. You all have turned out for us and are supporting your communities with all the wonderful health, and health programming. And we hope that being a part and a supporter of the Black Health Matters Summits is helping make stronger connections as you talk with your communities. We must give a shout out to the Bergen County Links. Thank you for your support. And we've got some new powerful sisters up in the house. And those are the sisters are of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Thank you so much for being here. You too have shown up in mass and we thank you for your support. Now we're going to talk about dental health. It's something that we really don't share enough information about. And it really is the gateway to our smile. It's our smiles. It's the gateway to our heart. There's a wonderful mind-body connection when you've got a great smile and great oral hygiene. The first thing that is often noticed about a person is their smile. Think about it. Smiling is one of the easiest things that we can do. You've been smiling since you were a child and well into adulthood. You probably smile today and you're smiling at the person next to you. So it's something that we just love to do. But have you ever stopped to wonder what your smile says about you? What your smile says about your health? We are so pleased to present Dr. Susan D. Stukes, the de de dental director at Covenant House Incorporated and the CEO at Siva Life Integrative Wellness. Good afternoon, Dr. Stukes. So nice to meet you. Thank you. And thank you for having me and remembering that or how important oral health is to our overall health. So I really appreciate that. So I'm going to be sharing today with you not so much about dental treatment, but about how you can maintain your smile, some prevention information, but two key, two key uh, aspects of oral health that sometimes get overlooked. So I hope you get uh, some benefit from the information I'm gonna be sharing with you. There we go. So, to start off, what we already know about oral health and hygiene needs are the basics, of course. You don't have to eat right, no sugar, get your checkup, brush and floss. And unfortunately, a lot of us in the dental profession have only given you those few tools to use to manage your, your oral health. And there's a lot, lot more to it than that. And, and when we talk about African-Americans and oral health, you know, of course, we struggle uh, to in, in all areas of health, but in oral health as well, we have some challenges. You know, we're much more likely to have cavities, even well up into our mid ages of four, uh, up to 44 years of age. And we're much more likely to be diagnosed with periodontal disease, which is gum disease. And I'll share some about uh, gum disease and just how important it is for your overall health in just a bit. So I'm going to share with you, there's two key areas I like to talk about when I'm giving people information on maintaining their smiles. One is lowering the inflammation in your mouth. And the second is to love your saliva. When we think about a healthy smile, a lot of times we only focus on how straight our teeth are and how white our teeth are. And you know, when you're young, of course, your teeth are gonna be wider and possibly straighter. And as we age, all kinds of things are gonna impact our smiles. But for me, I like to tell people, white teeth and straight teeth are nice, but those are not really um, the only indicators that you should focus on to make sure that your smile is actually healthy. Because really the, the, the fact of it is, there are over 700 bacterias that live in our mouth. And you've got your muscles, you have your nerve endings, you've got blood supply, and all of this is going on as we're, as we're sitting here right now, the bacterias and all those other factors, they're all fighting in our oral cavity in that environment to find balance. 
and things like good nutrition, sleep, even stress, all of those things, every second of the day are, are impacting how all of those factors interact in our mouths. And when those things are in balance, you've got a beautiful, healthy smile. And when they're not, this is when we start seeing cavities, gum disease, ulcers. Um, some of the things that can, can really affect our smiles of medications. A lot of times we don't realize a lot of medications have oral health um, complications. Stress, I talk a lot about stress. Stress really impacts our smiles because here again, the mouth is not just the teeth and it's not just, uh, it's just not the teeth, it's just not how straight they are. So stress, what we eat, our diets, and even as we age and we start developing some illnesses like diabetes. These are all um, things that can upset that balance in our mouths and set up an environment for bad things to happen. Um, and some of the things that can happen are cavities, gum disease, some oral cancers. And as I was sharing, as African-Americans, we are unfortunately at the top of the list for the cavities and the gum disease. But what I want you to understand is that a lot of it comes from these imbalances in our mouth. Cavities uh, are an infectious disease. So even the cavities, they are a result of these bacteria running, have, wreaking havoc in our mouth. The good thing is that we have some control over all of that. So outside of the brushing and the flossing, there's other things that we could do. Now, this, this the overgrowth of the bad bacteria can look like this in your mouth. Where you and, and I encourage all of us to, I know we rush and we brush really quickly, but take some time and look at our mouths. Just like you do a self-breast exam and you take, you take your blood pressure, it's really good for us to note any changes in our mouth. Do a little dental exam. Are you seeing things like this? Little redness, puffiness, um, are you seeing where maybe you brushed, but you still see some plaque there? Maybe you have to go back in, okay? But this kind of thing, when you see these, this redness, that's called gingivitis. And that's the early signs of this inflammation and gum disease. So when you see this gingivitis, you're gonna say, uh-oh, maybe I need to get in there a little bit more. Maybe I'm overdue for a cleaning. Maybe I'm taking a new medication and I need to think about maybe that ha has having an impact on my smile. And once again, looking in there and noting, and especially if you're taking medicines and you have a chronic illness, you do want to pay attention to any changes that might be going on in your mouth. I, sh I share this slide because this patient has a lot of very expensive dental work, crowns, veneers. But as you can see where the arrow is pointing, this patient's gums are red. And eventually the gums are gonna shrink and you're going to see horrible margins. The teeth are gonna get loose. So even though we invest in the dental treatment and the dental care, we have to invest in the self-care of our smiles to maintain all of this stuff. And like I was saying, the, the gingivitis is the early sign and then unchecked, you can go into gum disease or periodontal disease. I like to, to compare uh, inflammation to say high blood pressure because you may not even know you have it. And really a lot of people don't know they have uh, gum disease. It goes very silently, just like a lot of people that don't know they have high blood pressure, but silently this inflammation process is, is, is destroying your bone and your tissues. So over time, you may not realize it, but all of a sudden one day you might say, you know what, my teeth, I see a space in, in between my teeth I didn't have before. That means this, this gum disease has really progressed. Okay, teeth are gonna get loose, you're gonna start getting infections. So, and all of these things we can prevent if we stay on top and I'll give you some other information and watch and look out for any early signs. The thing about gum disease also, no matter what socioeconomic group you're in, it really starts showing up in people quite young. So some people even as early as 30 can have um, 
some problems with gum disease. So at, at all ages, we need to start incorporating a little bit more nurturing and support for our, our mouths and looking in and making sure and working to make sure we're not creating any kind of environment that's gonna feed this bad bacteria. And of course, as we age, more of us do end up with gum disease. Now with, with gum disease, there is a lot of information on how this gum disease not only affects your smile, but it's really very dangerous for your overall health. So some even say that gum disease can kill more than your smile. These, these bad bacteria that I was telling you about when they overgrow and you get inflammation, this stuff gets in your bloodstream and goes throughout our entire body. So things like stroke, respiratory disease, heart disease, diabetes, ulcers, arthritis, all of these things, they have proven links to that bacteria that we are feeding in our mouth. So the thing is, we don't wanna feed that bad bacteria. We wanna starve that out, okay? Um, and, and the thing with heart disease, and, and for a lot of us, we're already at a higher risk of heart disease and we're at a higher risk for gum disease. So if you put those two together, they're saying gum disease makes you at an even higher risk for heart attack, stroke, and cardiovascular events. So for us, if you put those two together, it's just, you know, we, it's just a nightmare, you know? So here again, looking for any signs we have of inflammation in our mouths, but also even if we don't see signs in the back of our minds, always thinking, you know, what am I doing that's gonna help me to keep my good bacteria thriving and the bad bacteria starving? Things like chronic kidney disease, even this inflammation from the, the mouth, these certain bacteria are now connected to kidney disease. And if you have kidney disease, just like if you have diabetes, this inflammation can actually make it harder to manage those diseases. Actually, um, gum disease is the sixth complication of diabetes now. And if you're not managing your mouth, you actually are, are going to have a harder time managing your diabetes. Even things like dementia, these are things we don't even think about our connections to the mouth. But dementia, and then so those are some of the things that have to do with overall health. But if you're thinking about your smile now, of course, the end result is tooth loss. And then with tooth, tooth loss, you have, of course, you can't digest your, your food properly. I have a lot of patients, if you have back teeth missing, you're chewing on your front teeth. I have people, they have stomach issues because they, they haven't been able to digest their food right. And they haven't been able to eat roughage. They haven't been able to eat foods that are really healthy for them. Um, speech problems, of course, drifting of teeth, you know, the aesthetics, of course, when you have missing teeth, you know, I mean, it's clear. And with this tooth loss, now you're, you're in this whole uh, thing of, of expensive dental, re dental replacements. J just to kind of further highlight the mouth and its connection to everything else, you know, you see all these long names of these bacteria, but what it's, this is showing you is that some of the bacteria in the mouth target specific areas of your body, target your heart, target the colon, um, target, you know, the, 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 uh, target the pancreas, cause cavities in your, from your mouth. These bacteria are geared to seek out certain parts of your body and wreak havoc. So now what you can do, of course, what I'm saying is you're gonna look for signs of inflammation and we're gonna feed our good bacteria and crowd out our bad bacteria. And what I like about this is, this is not anything that you need any high tech equipment for. This is not anything that's unique. You know, this is stuff that each of us can do at home in between our visits. So when you do go to the dentist, you and your dentist can have a nice talk and you could get a little cleaning and go about your way, you know? So things that you could do to crowd out your bad bacteria are coconut oil pulling. There's a lot of studies on that. And that actually flushes out the bad bacteria. 
green tea is really very healthy for your tissues and helping to feed your good bacteria. So if you like to drink coffee, like I do, I, well, I try to substitute out one cup with some green tea and sip on that. Your, your foods. Now, I know we've always been, to, you've always, we've always told our patients, don't eat a lot of sweets. Well, we're not, we haven't told you what you can eat. I tell patients, you should eat the rainbow. Your, your foods, your meals at the end of your day, it should have been the rainbow. And this way, you know that you're not only feeding, nurturing your whole body, but you really are nurturing your mouth. Things like vitamin A are, are wonderful for your saliva glands. C and D really gonna help fight against gum disease. Your calcium and your phosphorus, those are things gonna help strengthen your enamel. So when you do wanna eat that cake or you know it's the holidays and you really need you know, your sugar fix, <laughs> these will be things that kind of be protective for you. The other thing is probiotics for your smile. Now you've heard of like activity and things like that for your stomach. They have now products that um, you can take that actually feed the good bacteria. So if you're not into the rainbow, you can, you can also look for probiotics that you could add into your oral hygiene. And I always say quiet time, me time. Stress is horrible for your mouth. Stress sets up the environment for all that bad bacteria to, to continue to grow, okay? Now, the next key is your saliva. Which, which we really don't talk about a lot, but if you think about it, you, you, your tissues are bathing in the saliva 24 seven and we don't appreciate it and we don't nurture our saliva. Your saliva is what really protects us from cavities. It's got uh, a pH level, which is buffering. So when we wanna drink soda and all that stuff like that, it's our saliva that helps bring us back to a healthy uh, pH level so that bad bacteria can't grow. The saliva also, of course, helps to moisten our food, but also in the saliva are enzymes that start your digestion. So in addition to the chewing, the saliva works with the chewing to actually start your um, digestion. So the saliva is, is super, super important. And like I was saying, you know, it, it, it's the beginning of the, uh, it, it, it determines a, somewhat the level of your nutrition because if, if your digestion doesn't start off good, then everything else kind of is it's just like a, a domino effect. Now, the things that will affect your saliva, especially for uh, some of us that are getting up there, there are so many medications that affect our saliva. Um, high blood pressure medicine, sleep medications, um, um, antidepressant medications. There's, and so what I suggest is if you're on medications, just do a little searching to see, does this medicine have the complication of dry mouth? Even if your mouth doesn't feel dry, you might still have a decreased flow and not be aware of it, okay? And it's, it's called zero stomy is the, the fancy name for dry mouth, but what happens with the dry mouth? When you, when you take away the protection of our saliva, then cavities can develop like extremely rapidly. You're, you're prone to more infections, bacteria and yeast and fungus in the mouth that were held at bay by your saliva are now running rampant. And when you eat, then there's no buffer. So I have seen people within a matter of a few months have gone from a healthy smile to really struggling to keep their smile. Some of the things that you'll see, and here again, looking in your mouth, look, see, does it feel like your uh, mouth is, a, your tongue is a little thick? Does it seem like your mouth is not as glistening as it used to be? But what happens is the cavities start like near your gum line. And if you're looking in your mouth, you might notice something early on. And these type of cavities, they grow so quickly and they're very hard to imagine. What happens is if you've got crowns and things, these, this decay, it develops underneath it and ruins all your, 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 your um, beautiful dental work. Here again, foods, you eat the rainbow. Vitamin A is great for your salivary gland function. Drink a lot of water. And the main thing is a lot of people 
will say, I suck on mints to help uh, um, make my have so I can have a little more saliva function. But what you have to do is it cannot be any sugary. If you have dry mouth, sugar is not your friend. So you would have to have sugar-free hard candies to stimulate your saliva, sugar-free. If you are having any signs of dry mouth, no sugar, no acid. Now there, and this is just showing stains and discolorations can also be a result of dry mouth as well. But on the, on the good side, there are saliva replacements, uh, biotin, biotin comes in a lot of different forms. There's saliva max, there's quite a few. Um, things that you can also get if you have dry mouth to help protect you are things like, uh, it's an MI paste. It has extra calcium and phosphorus in it. And also I share some recipes with my patients too, where they can make their own paste. You need what you're gonna be doing, whatever you can to super protect your teeth if your mouth, if you have dry mouth. The, the other thing I wanna share about saliva is that not only is it protective, but saliva is wonderful for us to find out exactly what we have going on in our mouths and, and in our bodies. There's something called the, it's called periopath. And I know people don't like to spit into little vials, but this is great because it, it, it's sent to your home. You spit into the little vials, it's sent out. And what comes back is the actual report on the type of bacteria you have and it will also tell you, are those bacteria connected up with any negative effects to your organs? Like as I was sharing, some bacteria target your heart, some might target the kidneys. Well, this type of report will then show you that your, the bacteria that you have in your mouth is, is healthy or the bacteria that's not healthy, is it, is it bacteria that's gonna put you at a more risk of some of these you know, debilitating um, conditions. And then what it does is from there, you can more specifically target how you're going to manage your mouth. Some of, some of it might be medications that the dentist prescribes, but a lot of it would have to do with like foods and rinses and things like that. So it's another tool you have to protect your mouth to, from, by using the saliva. And here again, as you can see, this whole focus is on this bad bacteria in, in our mouths. And we just never really think we, we're, we're honed in on our teeth. We really, we just never think about what's really going on in there, you know? And this also kind of like um, um, Ms. Daniels, Daniels was saying, is tell you about what you have going on in the rest of your body, you know? Or, or am I at risk of these other things? So it's, 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 it's quite helpful and I, I do recommend that. And so just to summarize, although your white teeth are, or can be beautiful and there's many ways to get white teeth, you know, if you don't have white teeth, of course you can bleach, you can veneers, there's all kinds of things. But at the end of the day, whatever you do, if we're not feeding our good bacteria, and we're letting inflammation run havoc. It doesn't matter what you spend your money, you know, what you do. We have to have a good foundation for our teeth. And so from there, and after that, you can do whatever you like, you know? And remember your saliva. Just know, and certainly if we're taking certain medications, certain things like if we, we're having radiation treatment, things like this, we wanna make sure that our saliva is not affected. And if it is affected, we want to jump on that 100% with some of the protective things that I have shared. You know, and, and the beauty of this is by doing this, you're not just nurturing your smile, you're, you're, you're nurturing yourself, mind, body, and smile, I like to say. So I hope that's been um, helpful. And if you have any questions, I would love to talk with you. Let me see here, I see some questions. Okay, let's see, can you share on the teeth? Okay, so, well, so composites, they are safe. 
But here again, you know, composites are, it's a foreign substance. And, you know, some of these oral medicine, um, uh, oral biologists will even do testing on the composite material just to make sure that you and your body doesn't have a reaction. So, you know, it, it's still something that's foreign now. Back in the day, you know, we used amalgam for everything and that you could, practically having explosions and they wouldn't, you know, nothing would happen. But composites are safe. But the thing with composites is you do have to get them checked. They just are not going to hold up as long as those ugly silver pills. And they do stain over time. So you have to, you know, be careful of what you eat. Um, let's see. Oh, implants. Now here again with implants, you know, if you're not, I, I recommend a water pick. Uh, because that flushes out all around those types of uh, implants, as well as around the crowns. Because here again, with, with implants, you can get infections. And these infections can lead to them failing. So oral hygiene is very important. So for you, I would say a water pick would be something that would be helpful. Um, things to, ways to help manage your mouth. So I shared some of these things. And those are, uh, depending on where you are and how, how deep you want to get into things, they're simple things, like I said, adding the, um, the green tea. So with the coconut oil, how that works is you put a little tablespoon or so in your mouth. Now it comes kind of solid in a jar, but it's, it melts very quickly in your mouth. And when you put that in your mouth, it's going to melt quickly and you're not going to gargle with it. You're going to go, like that and swish it through the teeth. And I tell people to do that when they're getting dressed or something, because the longer you keep it in there, the more you can um, flush out that bad bacteria. And then you're gonna spit it out and rinse, don't swallow. And that's how you would do coconut oil fully. And it's very good. It's also help, you know, helps with whitening, but as far as inflammation, it is really good. Um, I wouldn't worry about the type of coconut oil. I, you can get it right in the supermarket, you know? Okay, so hydrogen peroxide is good to get rid of bacteria. Uh, I would just be very cautious of the strength of the hydrogen peroxide because what you can actually do is go overboard and you know create a negative situation where you, you have sloughing of your tissues. So, um, I, I, like, I like the coconut oil. Um, I do, for my patients that have like acute uh, inflammation, I prescribe them something that has a hydrogen peroxide in it. But I like to, I encourage the green tea and some other kinds of rinses that people can make. I like more um, natural and soothing and also protective, okay? Now, someone says I had lost two teeth or implants better than a bridge. Okay, there's all the options are good. There's no good or bad option. It all depends on you and what's comfortable for you. Some people don't want the um, invasive surgery of implants. Some people have um, medical issues and don't wanna have surgery. Bridges, and it just depends also with the bridges. If a person is missing one or two teeth and they were in there together and the other teeth are fine, I don't, I would, pref I recommend against a bridge because you have to cut away all the, the enamel and everything off of teeth that may not have anything on them. And once you do that, uh, as I showed you the slide with the gingivitis, you're gonna to have to be super, super vigilant uh, about the, the gum area and, and, and any inflammation because you get, it's easy under the margins of these crowns of the bridges to develop cavities. I see it a lot. Um, is it true that sugar-free is, is not, I'm not sure if it's 100% sugar-free, but the main thing is, especially if, you're, uh, if you have dry mouth, you want to go as close to sugar-free as possible. That's only for people that have a sweet tooth. You know, some people have a sweet tooth and they like putting a, uh, a candy in their mouth. You know, if you have dry mouth, 
the better things would be some of the slab replacements or water. You know, that would always be the best thing. Okay. Now with the brushing, you know, it's good to brush before bed. My thing is brushing, there's been some studies on brushing right after you eat. Now there's a little bit of information on that. So the timing of when you brush is, is sometimes some people think about. Now Listerine, I, I'm not a big uh, fan of Listerine. And actually there are some studies that show Listerine actually uh, is increased risk factor of people developing diabetes. Uh, because the Listerine, here again, this, this is a good one. Listerine kills all of your bacteria off. We don't want to do that. We just want to kill your good bacteria off. Listerine kills all your bacteria off. So whatever you had going on that caused you to have an imbalance, that's not been corrected. So, one, so the Listerine kills off your bad bacteria. When the bacteria grows back, it grows back the same way. And then you gotta have more Listerine. And they're also saying that by killing all of this bacteria, it's also setting up some processes in people that are pre-diabetic that um, predispose them in, uh, to developing diabetes. So, you know, I, I look at Listerine as like antibiotics. Antibiotics sometimes will kill everything off. You know, a lot of ladies when they have take antibiotics, they'll have stomach trouble, they might get a yeast infection, so while it's killed off what the problem was, it's killed off all your good stuff too. And that's kind of what Listerine um, can do. So that's, that's my thought on, on the Listerine. Okay, so the dentist, it's safe to go to the dentist. Now, when you get to your dentist, a lot of dentist offices will always already share with you what um, the protocols that they have. Okay, so what you're gonna be looking for is do they have some extra um, filtering of the air. And it comes in many different forms. Some people have a big, huge suction looking thing, which adds extra filtration and suction. Some have things that go in the mouth, but you can ask them, you know? Most dentists are quite careful, but certainly, you know, that's what you would ask and you would look for, okay? And if they're following that, those criteria, you should be fine. I know the ADA was was very strict. I mean, we couldn't we couldn't practice at all. We couldn't even use a drill. So, you know, the the, the ADA has been very careful in, and and allowing us to do you know move back into a normal life. You know, but that's what I would say. Recipes, okay. I'll have to look up some of my recipes. Okay. Um, oh yeah, because. You know what I can do? I can send to Ms. Daniels um, and the or, and the coordinators. I could send you some of the the recipes for some of the rinses and paste, and they could share those if that's if that's possible. Um, the name of the saliva report it's a uh, periopath, and it's put out by Oral DNA. And it's really quite nice um, because it does, because with us, we have a tendency in dentistry, we have certain antibiotics we use for certain things, but now you see that there's so many different bacteria in the mouth. Having that information on the actual bacteria might change the, the um, medications we might prescribe, or we might use a different rinse or something like that, you know? So it's all really very helpful. Um, so to decrease bone loss around your teeth is pretty much what I've shared. You want to continue to look in your mouth, make that maybe a once a month or something like that, where you're gonna look in your mouth, you're gonna check, make sure you're not seeing any signs of inflammation. You're gonna make sure that you're using, you know, so you use a coconut oil or anything anti-inflammatory in your mouth to keep low, lowering the possibility of you having inflammation and this damage. And certainly you're gonna get your checkups because they're gonna do some measurements and they're gonna take x-rays and then you'll be able to know your bone levels. But in between, you'll be able to get in there with the, some of the information I shared. That's how you're gonna decrease your bone load. 
the inflammation is what what destroys your bone. If you control your inflammation, you control your bone loss in most cases. Okay, toothbrushes, soft. That's it, that very quick answer for that one. A lot of people think a hard toothbrush is good. No, that's damaging. And certainly if you, as we age and our gums start shrinking away and some of our roots are a little exposed, if you're using a hard toothbrush, you're gonna really create some serious issues, you know? Now, someone's asking about full mouth extractions. I would really have to see exactly what you had going on for something like that, you know? Um, some of the recipes, yeah, I, I use are a mix of like baking soda, or coconut oil, sometimes a, a magnesium powder, mixing that up and either rubbing it on the teeth or adding it to, to a toothpaste, these types of things. And it actually have been shown to help remineralize the teeth. If you have areas of your enamel on here, again, if you're looking in your mouth and you're noticing little white patches or areas that you didn't see before, those are areas that could be strengthened by some of the things that I've shared, cutting down your acidic foods, acidic things, eating, eating the rainbow, doing more buffering kinds of drinks and things, water, all of that stuff helps to re actually remineralize the enamel. So I think I got through a, uh, the majority of the questions. I don't know if there's any others. Um, and I think that's, I think that's it. So I really did, I appreciate all the um, questions. Let me see, I see in the chat here. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, in the chat I'm looking. Sinuses, okay. So your sinuses, what happens is the sinuses in the top of your mouth, the roots of your teeth in the back are some of them are right up there next to those sinuses. When your sinuses get, oh, time is up, okay. <laughs> when they get the sinuses get full, then this is what causes the pain, okay? And, and I'm telling you my time is up, okay. So I thank you all, and you know you can certainly reach out, and I can entertain any other questions that you might have.